Hey, everybody. So this particular research paper caught my eye because this is a conversation that I have, let's say, at least once a week. Like, I think I'm literally just going to start utilizing this research paper as the basis of my conversation around this. And then I'll link that person to this research paper after having this conversation. So let me have this conversation with you. The research paper is called Small Models, Big Tasks, an exploratory empirical study on small language models for function calling. And it's uh, put out by uh, the University of, I'm going to say it wrong, Hyderabad in uh, India. And then I like the fact that they break this research paper down into four distinct questions. And then these four distinct questions are, are very much the questions that uh, everyone, if, if you are interested in small language models for agent functions, this, these are the four questions that you ask me, <laughs> plain and simple, right? Uh, and then so background of the paper, they give you a good analysis. Like here's what small language models are. And then here's the concepts that they're, that they, break down and talk about within the research paper very specifically. So zero shot, few shot, fine tuning and, and fine tuning for inference, GGUF models and prompt injection. This zero shot, few shot and fine tuning is just different ways and, and approaches of getting the model to produce outputs. So I'll, I'll break these down further. Um, and then GGUF refers to uh, quantizing the model, which uh, I'll discuss further. Um, and then the, the impacts of that. And then so uh, all of that wraps up into their four questions, right? And then so what are the four questions? They uh, list them out here. So uh, research question one, can small language models be successfully employed to generate function calls given a task and scenario in a zero shot setting? This is the most common question, like the number one question that I get asked uh, overall is, can you take like a, a, a gamma model or a small LLM and actually use it as an an, an, um, an agent for agent tasks? Like just, just zero shot, here's the task, no fine tuning right? Second question, how does few shot approaches affect the SLM's ability to generate function calls? So that first concept and that first question that I brought up is uh, just taking it off the shelf, right? So gamma, small LLM, etc. And then we're just like, like literally just uh, taking it and plugging it in. We're not doing anything else to it. Can it successfully perform a function call in that instance? Question number two is, is we're taking it off the shelf and then we're giving it a few generally prompt based examples, right? So let's say that we want it to uh, perform a function call to execute a uh, website f function. Like we want it to go to a, web a website. Uh, and then so we would give it a few examples of here's the like uh, examples of the website function and how you should execute it, right? And then so there's a distinct difference then between RQ1 and RQ2 in this instance. So research question three or RQ3, does fine-tuning SLMs enhance its capability of generating function calls? This is very, very distinct from one or two, right? So one or two are both, we're taking the model off of the shelf and then we're not doing anything behind the scenes. In R2, we're giving it a few additional prompts and then more information up front, but we're not changing anything with regards towards the weights or uh, doing any adjustments there, right? RQ3 is changing that equation. We are changing and updating the weights. We are literally fine tuning the weights with RQ3, right? That's that's what RQ3 is asking is if we do a fine tuning process within this, is it going to update the weights or is it going to uh, have an impact within this if we do update those weights, right? And then so RQ4, how do SLMs perform in generating function calls when deployed on an edge device? And then so this goes back to that GGUF and that quantization, right? Kind of that, one, that outlier that stuck out there. And then so Within that, uh, I think this is a, a good question. Is it's essentially a few questions rolled up into one question, right? It's the bottom line is is if I quantize a model uh, and then I put it on an edge device, is it going to actually be good? <laughs> like, is it going to be uh, good compared to the? Uh, uh, unquantized model that's not running on an edge device uh, for uh, like uh, function calling very specifically. And then edge device meaning like a, a like a Raspberry Pi, a very small type of device, uh, or your phone, as opposed to like a, a full blown computer, right? And the only way that I can do that with these large models is to quantize the model. And then so they 
ask these research questions, and then they go through, and then they go, they set up experiments for each one of these, and then actually run through the experiments. And that's what I love within this, right? Is that so? They're uh, not just asking the question, and then hey, they could maybe you know maybe this is how it is. <laughs> let's let's uh, use conjecture for it. There, okay. This is their research questions, and then they're going to like actually do experiments around each one of these, and then so we're going to get like actual data to back it up, right? Like the the most common like situation that like honestly it ticks me off around uh, when it comes to agents like I, I lose like honestly like so much business and uh, I have so many bad conversations around agents overall because what will happen is is someone will introduce me to someone that is interested in agents right and then they'll be like, oh, yeah, I have an AI guy that has told me about agents, and they say that they'll work phenomenally, and that they'll work, like, 100% of the time, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it's like, okay, well, like, that 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 guy's blowing smoke, and then now I have to be in the position where I'm, like... Uh, Disproving your AI guy, right? Like, so I'm not. I'm going to lose that one that battle 100 percent of the time, right? That's just how it how it goes, right? Uh, and then so uh, being put into that uh, situ awkward situation up front is like uh, my my daily basis and like my daily routine, right? And then when I every single time that I interact with these people, they always see the same thing, right? Like I like I have like 20 to 30 years of experience implementing these things, uh, and I know a big corporation X that is doing. Uh, like oh, uh, projects with agents Y and like they have fully replaced their department Z with a, like a 100% AI automation, right? And I'd be like, okay, like, uh, get, can you give me any sort of details about that? No, like, like pure NDA, right? Like, like I can't give you uh, any sort of details. Like, and it's like, okay, I mean, like, like, uh, I have, I, I've worked in consulting for, uh, let's call it a decade plus. I've worked, I've consulted with like, you know, Fortune 500s, uh, across the board. I mean, I can tell you, like, I, like, uh, I also know that I'm in California, right? <laughs> and so, uh, within that, I, I, I can very specifically tell you, like, I, like, I, I've consulted for Clorox, for Chevron, for, uh, like, uh, it takes one to know one, right? I, like, I, 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 I like, uh, I understand how companies and, and corporations uh, as a whole operate on a big level. Uh, John Deere, like uh, like Microsoft, whatever, right? Um, and then so uh, within that, there's um, kind of the, like my BS detector always just goes off immediately. But I always know 100% that I'm going to lose those battles, right? And then I, I hate getting into that because it's always a philosophical battle. Like it's always like uh, m like the person's experience. Like okay, I have 30 years of experience like doing blah blah blah. Like like exactly this. Like I have 30 years of experience with like actual agents, right? I've been like deploying AI agents for 30 years now. <laughs> and then like okay, uh, and then uh, the like then they like I have I, I know. Know, like the this big company, like this huge company uh, that has and deployed it, right? And then I can't talk about any of that because of like uh, like uh, agreements and, and the agents. But they, they it's one hundred percent like what like my example is like they they have like one hundred percent success rate, right? And there's like uh, blah blah blah, right? It's like okay, like what am I like in that situation? Like what can I do? And I'm just like okay. Uh, I say that they, that like agents won't work, <laughs> that it's wrong, that they shouldn't be looking into that, and then all of a sudden I'm painted as the guy that like doesn't understand. Like I'm the one that doesn't understand AI. Then right? Like well, look, he doesn't understand AI. Like he doesn't understand how to implement agents. Like he's like you know saying that like they don't work. Like and it's like well like I, 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 so that's the, what uh, how those conversations go down. But when you look at the data within this, right, which is what I I, I love to do within this. So let's look at the results, right? So. Pure results. Uh, to research question number one, which is the most important question to me, can SLMs be successfully employed to generate function calls given a task and a scenario in a zero shot setting? This is the like number one most requested question that everyone asks me, right? And then it, like you will get a lot of anecdotal answers to this question. Like anecdotally, someone knows someone that like uses Manus that like uh, has a 100% success rate, right? But According to the research, DeepSeek Coder generates JSON parsable responses with a success rate of only 7.34%. That's their highest ranking model, zero shotting these things with small language models. 7.34%. The data doesn't lie, right? I don't care. Uh, like, 
it, who knows what and what entity and and like like you know some entity that that, that has deployed these agents and that they've replaced all of their departments 7.34 percent the data doesn't lie right so then question number two how does a few shot approach affect the slm's ability to generate function calls and then so this is like like not like trying to like just poo poo all over this data right this shows that like very specifically that like few shotting does make a, a huge improvement it can increase your results by 67 to 80 percent in fact like dramatic increase right but then you have to remember within that 67 to 80 percent that we're starting at a baseline of 7.34 percent so then that 67 to 80 percent increase leads to an average task accuracy of 55.65 percent which means that uh outside of like so the best that you're going to be able to do like the absolute best that you're going to be able to do with the agent framework just taking a model off of the shelf uh and then trying to have it do calls and with, with few shot prompting. So let's say that you have like a rag database and it's like, like, like whatever they want to set up within that, as long as it's not updating the weights, 55.65% accuracy. That's just how it is, right? Then again, the numbers don't lie <laughs> within this. And then, so this is just the pure, like, 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 let's talk about data, not anecdotal, like, et cetera, right? The, the data is 55% accuracy with most models getting 13 to 16% accuracy uh, and then like that's what you're uh, 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 generally expecting within that and what I would generally expect within this is still a performance of 13 to 16 percent that's an, I mean 13 to 16 percent isn't isn't good <laughs> uh, so then let's go on to question number three does fine-tuning SLMs enhance its capability of generating function calls very much yes improving from 7.34 percent in the zero shot setting to 89 percent in the few shot setting and reaching nine 99% after fine tuning. Similarly, Phi 3 Mini shows a notable jump with JSON parsability increasing from 0% in zero shot and few shot settings to 99% after fine tuning. So Phi 3 goes from 0% off the shelf to you fine tune those models out and you'll get 99% accuracy, right? Like, which, like, in those particular instances and in, in, in that instance. So I think that's a good instance to uh, highlight within this, right? And, and to mention within this uh, fine tuning, because it's a, the kind of the, the third question that. That I get with and this is like do you need to fine-tune these models like is fine-tuning these models good like should you fine-tune them one million percent yes you should be fine-tuning these models like all day long right like uh, uh, almost everything that I do uh, when I'm touching a model like I'm the very first thing I'm doing is fine-tuning it like I'm, I'm like like even if I'm just taking it off the shelf very first step I'm fine-tuning it right just I mean that's kind of how I operate now and I just set up all of my like my my code all of my scripts all of that to just automatically fine-tune and assume that we're gonna just auto fine-tune right that's, that's step one and then our, our our Q number four, I think, is an important question as well. Uh, how do SLMs perform in generating function calls when deployed on an edge device? And then so remember, in order to be on an edge device, it needs to be quantized. So the question that it's really asking here is like, how does quantization uh, impact the model overall uh, when it comes to performance? Uh, and then so what we see is is that quantization essentially has some impact on the model, but not a, a whole lot. Breaking that down, kind of what what all of that uh, calculates within here is that the the like uh, bottom like most of your performance uh, decreases ends up in, in latency right so beyond latency memory constraints further impact edge uh, uh, beyond latency memory constraints further edge a uh, further impact edge deployments but so like you you have your uh, like requirements that you would already have and like all of your your problems that you would already have from it being an edge device in and of itself of memory and then also too you have to recognize and build in that it's going to be more latency overall right but that's kind of expected like main findings from rq4 edge device deployment shows that deep sea coder achieves the best balance between performance and latency and memory usage while few shot learning yields better accuracy metrics it comes with slightly increased latency compared to other settings we also observe that the models consume about five Five times less memory on edge devices than on servers due to GGUF. So you're getting like a very slight, very, very slight uh, performance decrease and then a massive decrease in memory consumption, right? 5x decrease in memory consumption um, across the board. And you're able to put it onto those edge devices overall, which to me, all of this adds up to like reasons and good things why you would want to quantize the models via GGUF as well, right? So that's kind of the, the like uh, other thing that I think that this is interesting that it, it points out here as well. And then it gives you just like a bunch of metrics and benchmarks it's the memory usage for uh full uh full quants versus quantization 
etc. Right. Um, and then so that's the paper overall. And then so kind of the overall findings within this real world is is that to me again it's real world example, real world data. It's not ready like like these. Uh, Examples of uh, air, like replacing your whole entire system with agents that are talking to each other, etc. And no one is actually doing that because it doesn't actually work overall. Uh, and it's especially taking it off the shelf. Uh, if you want to find, if they're not mentioning fine tuning the models overall, then you can one million percent know that it's fa a failure, right? Like you have to like uh, like understand it and and have them lay out what their fine tuning process is and how they're fine tuning these models overall. If you want to. And like um, get an example of what like that fine tuning process looks like. I can give you a few examples, right? I've, I have a few uh, repositories <laughs> that have built out uh, around agents that I've shown before, but I can show you. Let me see. I think this one's actually the best one because this one. So this particular example utilizes fine tuning of a phi three models, right? Um, and then so uh, within this particular instance, you fine tune three models, and then uh, 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 like, yeah, you fine tune three models, and then you fine tune them twice. And then so each you have an individual planner, a caller, and a summarizer, and then each one of these has different actions that they take, individualized actions, and then you also summarize and and do a, a global fine tuning, right? So it's a global to local progressive fine tuning, um, etc. Like this uh, framework is is been popularized, right? Like this is kind of like uh, like uh, agent to agent framework. Like most agent frameworks now utilize like so this or some sort of variation of this because this is just how it works, right? <laughs> like I, I didn't do it; it's just the, the, how it is. Um, but so pointing it out, like like the, and the problem with these models and and this framework is is that this is exploitable, right? Like because so you're fine tuning, for example, a caller and a summarizer. So if you just if you figure out how to just exploit and and send messages directly to the caller, it can bypass the planner, right? And the planner, the caller doesn't have uh, planner actions. It doesn't think through So it just takes actions from the caller, right? Or from the planner. So if you just give the somehow, like, if you're just able to like bypass this and then just give this straight input, like it's just going to take whatever you want uh, and then kind of go, go to town like that, right? Which is kind of, uh, there's uh, pointing out like lots of risks around these things, right? These are the things that uh, normal, like uh, your normal AI guy isn't going to point out to you. Your normal AI guy is not going to know that, right? Like not going to know that level of detail to, to point it out to you. Like, yeah, it works 100% of the time for for like uh, Fortune 10, <laughs> like, and I have 30 years of experience. Um, it, that's that's going to be their angle like that, right? And then so I just, I mean, highlighting and pointing these things out to you. Uh, hopefully this this uh, resonates with someone. Uh, so I'll leave a link to the paper. Small models, big tasks, and exploratory empirical study on small language models for function calling. If you'd like to have a content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.